Hello everyone, welcome, thanks for joining in. Today we're gonna to be working on the BL01 Lab 2 using the BAS Toolkit. We're gonna to be following along in the training seminar put together by iConnect Training. In this lab, we're gonna be using the BAS Emulator. So this is creating a virtual environment that's running a controller such as the BAS Control 22. We're also gonna be using a software called BAS Backup and this can be used to backup, restore, or clone an emulated controller or an actual controller such as this one. Emulation overview. If you haven't heard this term before, an emulator is a hardware device or software program that enables one computer system, known as the host, to imitate the functions of another hardware device or system known as the guest. It enables the host system to run software, tools, devices, components, which are actually designed for the guest system. There's a few different ways that I've seen emulators used. The first one being a mobile device on a computer. If you're a software developer trying to create an app or a program for a mobile device, you're not gonna sit there on a cell phone screen and try to type it in, right? You're gonna, you're gonna program it, you're gonna code it on a computer, emulate it, test it out, fix the bugs, fix the issues before you transfer it to the actual mobile device. The second way is computer systems. Macintosh Apple and Windows PC, I've seen them emulated on each other. Emulating a building automation system, what we're doing today. On the next slide, we'll talk about some of the advantages for this. And then the last one I've seen is emulating video gaming systems on computers. So these are just a few that came to my mind. There's many other different ways you can use emulators. The BAS emulator is a handy utility and a great piece of software that works in conjunction with Sedona Application Editor, also known as SAE, and the program BAS Backup. BAS Emulator can emulate on a Windows PC the operation of any controller in the BAS Control series. So today we're working on the BAS Control 22. This is key, it's highlighted in bold here. All real, virtual, and web points, including Sedona SAE logic, can be viewed as if it was an actual controller. All web pages appear the same as if it was an actual controller. So emulation has a lot of advantages. There's a couple listed out here. The first one being program development can begin before ordering the actual controller. This is huge. If your company is on a tight deadline for a building or a facility or a complex, you can start the programming days or weeks in advance and when the actual controller gets on site, you can just transfer your programming over. The second one, programs can be developed and tested before being transferred to a live controller. This is cool because you can work on logic, you can work on different features and functions, test them, and then bring them to the live controller once you've ironed out a lot of the bugs. So if you're new to building automation system or Sedona, the emulator is great because you can start to learn some of the processes and programming in the emulator. You're not tapping into your building's controller and having the potential to mess up a config file, right? I'd recommend getting a training simulator such as this because you're working hands-on and you start to learn a little bit deeper into the process. So the controller and emulator overview. Today we're gonna to be emulating the BAS Control 22. What's in front of me, what's on the computer screen here. We're running a virtual environment that's gonna look, feel, and drive the same exact way. So with that, I wanted to note, if you're coming off of lab one and you still have this plugged into the computer, disconnect it. Unplug it, put it to the side. It's gonna allow you to realize we're working on an emulator. If you're still plugged in, it might get a little confusing, so just unplug it, make it a little bit easier. To launch BAS Emulator, it's pretty simple. We're gonna to go to our desktop and double click the icon. If you don't have the icon there, you'll have to find it in your start menu. This should open a new window, and you can see in the platform drop-down menu, these are all the different controllers that we can emulate. So we're going to be emulating the BAS Control 22. It's always going to use the same IP. We're not changing any of that. And we're going to start the emulator. This should open a new window in your web browser asking for the username and password, admin, admin. And here we are. We are in a virtual environment replicating the BAS Control 22. If you watched Lab 1, these screens are identical. It's as if we were in an actual controller. And so now we're in a virtual environment. We can change things, we can play with things, and it's not gonna matter. You can see I've changed universal input one. We can mess with universal input two. 
We can change the different units. We can test out different values, right? This is great because we know we're not gonna screw up an actual controller. So you can see there, it worked. Everything's the same. We can change binary inputs, analog outputs, binary outputs. So we can get into virtual points. You can see here I've changed virtual point one to a test with different increments and different units, right? This is a great environment to play with things, to test things out, and we know we're not gonna mess up an actual controller and our boss isn't gonna be mad at us and the building's not going to be set for 58 degrees in the winter, right? This is a, this is a cool way to learn the environment, to play with things, to test things out without any consequences. If you really mess up something, close out the program, kill the emulator, and restart from a brand new slate, a clean slate. So with that being said, we've ran the emulator. You can see the screens are identical. So now we're gonna close out of it. I'm gonna close out of the web browser. And then if I was looking to end it, I would kill the emulator. What I wanna do now is get into BAS Backup, the software. So there's two different ways to get to it. You can double click the desktop icon or in BAS emulator, there's actually a button for BAS backup and it'll start it. BAS backup is another great utility that comes with the Sedona application editor software. It can be used to backup, restore, or clone an emulated device or an actual controller. So with BAS backup open, we can see typically the IP addresses will automatically populate. So this is the IP address that I use for the actual controller. Since we're not plugged in, you can see the status is offline. And when we go to the emulated IP address, you can see it's online. So why don't we do a backup of the emulated controller? We are going to label it emulated backup 01. We're gonna click the backup. It's gonna always ask you for the username and password for the controller. And you can see here, it'll run through and download a couple different files from the controller. So I sped that up, but it takes about a minute or two to complete. So we ran the backup. If you wanna see the actual files that are compressed, you can go to the contemporary controls folder, go to the backups, and then here's our emulated backup. You can double click that and you can see all the files that were downloaded in the backup. So we've backed up an emulator. Now we're gonna back up the actual controller. And so we have it hooked up. We plugged it in, connected to the ethernet, and now we're going to confirm that we're connected on the computer. So you can see on our web browser, we typed in the IP address. It asks us for username and password should log us into the controller, and it does. If you remember in lab one, we changed this to zone temperature and input two to supply air temperature. So yeah, we're in the controller now. What we're gonna do is close the web browser out and open up BAS Backup. So with BAS Backup open, we can see the IP address for the controller and it shows a status of online. Let's say you're at a facility and they have a new rooftop unit. You've worked on some programming for the new rooftop unit and you've added some features and some updates. So let's make a backup that's kind of specific for the rooftop unit. Rooftop one underscore 15, 17 dot zip. We're gonna hit backup. It's always gonna ask us for the username and password. And then again, it's gonna take about two minutes to do a backup. So we can see it's been complete. Now let's talk about the restore feature. Very similar to the backup feature, just as simple. Let's restore the backup we just did of our controller. So with the software open, we would choose the file. And so we're gonna just restore that rooftop unit, 1517, and we're gonna hit restore. So it should bring up these seven parameters. You wanna make sure that it's for the right device. 
if you had 15 different backups and they were for different buildings or different controllers, you definitely don't want to restore the wrong backup. So the seven parameters are correct. We have the correct controller. If you wanted to make a backup of the file you're about to restore, you could create something here. And this would be the recovery file in case your restore went crazy. Down here, you have three different restore options, the wire sheet, the main configuration, and the web component configuration. Typically, these are considered more advanced. You don't wanna change these. Um, it's gonna be kind of whatever the default is. We didn't have any web component configurations to back up, so we're not restoring that. But once you've verified it's the right one and you have everything selected, and if you want a recovery file, you could put that in there, you're gonna click restore. It's gonna bring up the username and password. And then this should take about a minute or two. So there it says complete. This is probably 45 seconds. And now it gives you an option. The controller must be restarted for changes to take effect. Restart controller, yes or no. So if you were still on the web browser, you could click cancel here and do it through the web browser. Since we don't have it open, we're gonna click okay. Now, one important thing to note is if you're not physically at the controller, you may not want to do a restore um, because if there's an issue, if it doesn't boot up properly, now that system's not going to work, right? We, we want to make sure we're there to verify that it works. We can see on the controller, some of the LEDs are lighting back up. We know that it's restarting. And if we go into the web browser, and type in the address, you can see it won't load because the controller is still restarting. So let's try the web browser now. It's been a few minutes for the restart. So everything's back to normal. Another cool feature you can do with BAS Backup is cloning. So if you have two facilities that are nearly identical, you could actually do a clone of one system and just copy it right over. It can save hours of programming and development. So it'd be pretty similar to a restore. I'm not gonna go through every step, but essentially you would restore and then you would change the IP address to the new controller because if you have it as the old controller, you could have IP conflict issues. But yeah, essentially when you're cloning, you are just doing a restore and changing some of the configurations of it. So the last feature I wanted to talk about with BAS backup is the SAX data. So if you click get SAX data, you can see at the top here, this is the SAX data or file from the actual controller. So this is great because you can see the number of components, we're at nine, and the RAM used is 2960. And then if we get it from our backup file, again, we can see number of components nine, RAM used 2960. The SAX data can be helpful when you're looking at backup versus actual controller and making sure all the features were restored. So that wraps up lab two. We were able to use an emulator, create a virtual environment, and compare it to an actual controller. We saw just how identical they were once we logged in. We also used the BAS backup tool. We were able to backup, restore, talked a little bit about cloning, and then we were able to look at some other data. In lab three, we start to use the Sedona application editor. And this is gonna be great because we start to work in the program, we start to work with components and we actually complete a program. So hopefully you join me for lab three, it's gonna be a fun one. I encourage you to check out iConnect training. They got a couple different training simulators that are awesome. This is the BLO1, the training material that comes with it is spot on for learning building automation systems. It's been a great program so far. I hope you join me for lab three. Again, thanks for watching.